Hello, everybody. Oh, what a good girl. You guys are so good. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Welcome. Hey, guys. Tamika's here. Two Scoops is here. Angie's here. Awesome, you guys. Welcome. Hello. Oh, thanks for the hearts. Cool, you guys. Kaylin, awesome. Hey. Two Scoops, what's up? Trainer Dave, welcome. Hi. Hey, hey, hey. So you guys want an update on the puppies. They're right now, what's up? Yeah, awesome, having a great day. Had a great training day. That's a few, yeah, lots of dogs. Um, so two brown ones are with me for training. Um, the two brown and white ones are mine. So they're all right now completely free to do whatever. Hello, welcome. Yeah, you guys, I'm so psyched that y'all are here. And um, everybody's jumping on. We've got a good group, good group of dogs, good group of people. So glad that you're here. Uh, if you are new to me or following me, my name is Kim Greco. I own a dog training business called Paws and Possibilities. And I'm the creator of our online dog training program called Manners Matter. Let me scoop back so you can watch them. Oh, they run around the couch. Um, yeah, so these two puppies, hey Joy, welcome. How's everybody, how are you guys doing today? It's Monday, how's everybody? You guys have a good day? Let me know. I had a great day. Good day with the kids. Kids were off of school today, so they got to help train these puppies all day, which they loved. You're doing great, I'm glad to hear that. Awesome, oh great Angie, thank you. <laughs> and you just got back from dog training and now you're watching dog training, so good for you. Awesome. Yep, good, good, good. Awesome, you guys. So glad. These puppies, you're just dropping in. That's totally cool. Hey, Karen, how are you? Um, so these guys have an endless amount of energy. You got to learn. Good for you, Dave. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, these guys are wild. They're crazy. Oh, they're hitting the tripod. They're not doing anything wrong, though. They're allowed to play like this right now, and they're allowed to play pretty rough like this. So we're all good. You do scopes awesome. Good. Still there. Am I still here? Yeah. Oh, these puppies. These puppies are still here. Yeah, they are. So um, I'll have them for probably just over a week. The puppies, you're right. Yeah, I got it. It took me a second. I was like, I'm still here. I thought, Karen, you were saying you couldn't hear me. Um, yeah, so Molly's telling them to simmer down. She's allowed to do that also. So everything is all good. Um, these guys, these puppies, by the way, have trained and worked all day long. You would never know it. They are an endless bound of energy and they're awesome. I have been having a blast working with them. And uh, so, a little bit of history, you guys. Last week, these puppies came in for training and they um, would jump incessantly. They would pull like there's no tomorrow. In fact, they'd pulled the, the daughter of the family down. She'd come in just a few days before they got dropped off, like all muddy from getting dragged around. They're having fun, I know. They're on, this is their recess, right, from training today. Um, so they, all the classic steps, right? Like they jumped, they pulled, they were mouthing, so they would always be putting their teeth on people. Um, they had not had a lot of experience um, socializing with other dogs. So honestly, uh, last week they were nervous of mine. I'm gonna take that bell off the door because Molly, you can't go out right now, sweetheart, we're broadcasting. She, um, when this energy, yeah, I know. The uh, Molly is requesting to take them outside because she'll work them on the property. Uh, when they have this much energy, she'll run them and work them. Um, so that's her, she, literally she's requesting, may I please take these puppies that are this wild outside and teach them a thing or two. I know, she's awesome, but she can't do it right now because we're on Periscope, and then we would have no dogs left for the Periscope. Um, Molly's a genius. And uh, so I use a little wind chime. This is the one that just came off my door. Um, I use a wind chime for the door, so they just have to touch it ever so slightly, and it makes a really nice sound. Uh, so you guys want to know what breed these are. Um, these puppies are the rescue dogs, so I think they have some pointer in them, and I think they have some lab in them. And they probably have lots of other things in them too, right? Hey, hi, Dee So I'm gonna throw them on leash right now just so that they don't get too worked up and um, settle them down. Hello, oh, what a good, so yeah. You guys saw this last week um, when they were just learning this. And um, 
So now they know that when I put the leash under my foot, they lie down. Let's see if Sadie will also do it. Sam just laid down right away. Let's wait and see what she does. There we go. Cool. So they'll just hang out there now and be pretty calm. And not. Um, and the only reason I want them to calm down is because I, they're puppies still. So I'm not watching them close enough to see if they would have to go to the bathroom. Um, when you started Sam with Poison Down, but you used the command right away, um, when you're saying when I did, so if I, I would have started, if I could remember back that far ago, long ago, when you guys watched the Periscope, I did down and place with them. Was he on leash, Karen? Was he on leash? I would only use the word if I'm willing to bet $5. Oh, now my two are going to play for you. Um, if I'm willing to bet $5, they'll do it. Yeah, Angie says they were on leash. So if they're on leash, I'm willing to bet $5 they'll do that command because if they don't do it just simply from my verbal command, they'll do it because I can lead them to it. So as long as I'm willing to ensure that they'll be able to do the command, then I'm happy to use the word. Um, so hang on a minute. I only have socks on, so that slipped right out from under my foot. Yeah, wear shoes when you do this exercise. Um, so that's why. But typically when I am, you were surprised that that makes sense. Perfect. So, but I'm so glad that you brought that up, Karen, because I teach people, like, if you're just starting a command with a dog, don't, don't use the word right away. Don't add in the word until you're willing to bet $5 that the dog will do the behavior correctly. But I had taught them from the calming exercise that if I stand on the leash, that they're going to end up lying down. So if they're on a leash, they're going to be able to lie down, um, whether they know the word or not, because I'm just going to be able to put a little bit of tension on the leash and then they'll lie down. Does that, that make sense? Awesome. Good. So, um, so these guys are doing great. I think the best part about their transformation, um, you've been trying to figure out without your three-month-old pup. Good. Awesome. Yeah. Anytime you're training something new, just wait to add the word in until, oops, sorry. Wait to add the word in until you're sure they'll do it. And when you're sure they'll do it, you add the word in, then it's super simple. Cool. Excellent. Um, yeah, so these guys laid right down and then they got up because mine are still really rambunctious, but this is so good for them to work on having to lie down even when there's puppies playing right next to them. See that? They're looking longingly at my two playing, um, but still good for them. <laughs> They're so good. Uh, so I, I'm most proud of and most excited about the fact that these guys aren't jumping anymore. They're not jumping on me. They're not jumping on other people. They're not jumping on someone when they first meet them. And best part is they're not jumping on kids. So my kids, I have a video today. Honestly, you guys, if you're not following me on Facebook, follow me on Facebook because I will post the video this evening. Um, I'll find a really cool clip. But I was doing place training with them today where um, they, I wanted to try to add in a distraction to see if I could get them to leave their place. And I was having trouble. They were doing so great. I was having trouble finding a distraction that would cause them to leave their place. I couldn't, couldn't actually find one. So I, um, I told my kids to come downstairs. And <laughs> yeah, awesome. So perfect. Yep, Karen, no problem. Um, I told my kids to come downstairs and I said to them, please do whatever you can to try to get these dogs to come off of their place. And first of all, my son, who's 10, he walked right up and he said, okay, Sam, which is his release word. And I was like, that's not really what I meant, <laughs> right? Brilliant on his part, but not what my intention was. So I, I put him back on. Now, I wanted them to try to distract them and have them bolt off of place based on what the kids were doing. So my daughter used to be a gymnast. She was doing um, round off and cartwheels. She was walking on her hands. She actually did a handstand into a somersault and landed very close to the bed that Sam was lying on and he did not get off, which was awesome because Sam can sometimes be a little skittish. Um, so they were really doing great. I couldn't really come up with much for them to get off. The, the hardest part for them to hold their place now is if one is on place and I call the other because they're so used to doing everything together. Um, but the best part is that the kids, my daughter had some friends over last night and so the dogs met them off leash with no obedience. 
right? I didn't tell him place, I didn't tell him down, I didn't tell him to do anything. The kids just walked right in the room and there was no jumping, uh, which is awesome. I loved it. And so tons of clicks, tons of treats, no jumping, but with no um, help on my part, right? They've just learned that their feet stay on the floor. Um, and so, and there's no mouthing either. Those two things often go away together. I never really worked these. I don't think I said no and corrected them for mouthing once um, in the past several days. And so it's pretty cool because when you calm them down in general, oftentimes you see uh, lots of behaviors. Um, do I think that they'll do so well at home? Yes, Angie, I do think that they'll do really well at home. The reason is because we have a really great um, methodology for teaching the owners how to ensure that they keep up with what they know. Um, yes, I do. I click and treat when they don't jump uh, without any commands. Perfect. Yeah, so I, literally that would be my description of saying I'm going to click and treat them for making a good choice um, all by themselves. So when they can make a good choice, I will highly reinforce that. In fact, in my world, um, that's the most important time to reinforce um, when they do it right without my help. Mainly because my goal is that I want to not have to micromanage them. So I want them to, thank you. You are so sweet. Thanks so much, Catherine. I appreciate that. So helpful. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, um, I don't really know, like, I kind of wanted you to see them without any commands when they were running around at the beginning of Periscope playing. Molly, enough. Good girl. Good girl. What are you doing? Huh? She, uh, I think she needs to go, to, I think she needs to go out. Um, so I am going to let her outside because she doesn't usually ask repeatedly um, if I've told her no, unless she has to pee. So um, I will do that. Hang on just a second. I'll take these guys with me. Okay. Good. Good girl. Yeah, you're saying you guys are on camera. Um, so I couldn't walk them on a flat buckle collar earlier, a couple days ago. They would have just dragged me all around the room. Um, and now I, I put a prong collar on them when I'm walking them out of the house, but when I just take them out to go to the bathroom, if I'm just walking around like this, I can be on a flat buckle collar and they're really respectful. They're not pulling, they check in with me, they want to make sure, like, even right now, like, they're not, they would have been <laughs> dragging and pulling and gagging and, like, making themselves cough with how um, strong they were pulling. Cool. So now, of course, they're like, well, we want to go outside and play, <laughs> um, but that doesn't work well. Uh, with Periscope. So did you guys have any specific questions? I'm curious if you have any specific questions about these guys or their training or what exactly we worked on or what was hard or what was um, there. Yeah, like like the one. Yes, I clicked and treated when they were good. Um, manners based for me is all about like I, I, I would rather not have to give them a lot of commands. I don't want to have to tell them to lie down. I don't want to have to tell them to sit so they won't jump. I want them to just not jump, right? So it's a huge, and the fact that, you know, they were both kind of excited and they both really wanted to go out and I didn't do anything, nor did I step on the leash, but they're, it's more like their default now is just to go relax um, when, right? Like as opposed to staying with it, they could let that go pretty quick. Um, oh, I really wanted to go out with them. No, okay, I'll just lay down here then uh, when there's nothing else going on, which is pleasant. That, this kind of choice that a dog would make makes it really easy to live with your dog. She says, sit on the dog and start teaching them to be calm. Yes, um, and to be really specific, um, we sometimes call it sit on the dog. I like to refer to it most as like just a calming exercise because there is a trainer that officially created a protocol called sit on the dog and what I do is not exactly sit on the dog um, but what I do what I have shown you in the periscopes when I put the leash under my foot sometimes I call it sit on the dog sometimes I say calming but either way that's what I do to work with the dog teaching the dog how to be calm and how to be calm in a variety of different um, atmospheres I took these guys over to a group class on Saturday where they got to interact with about eight other puppies and before they got off leash to go play um, I did that calming exercise so they were lying on the ground in the class um, 
So now that there's whining with no direction, I'll interrupt myself for a minute. So there was some whining with no direction. All I did now to help curb the whining was I put a little restriction on with there. So there it is under my foot now. Um, so he doesn't have as much freedom to, he was sitting up and whining. Um, Sadie was not. She's pretty calm back there just hanging out on her own. So she gets a little more freedom. So it just helps them calm down if they need help. So at the beginning of the class, the group class, I, I literally had one under each of my feet. They were laying down calmly with eight other puppies in the room. When I unclipped their leash for them to go play, they were already in a calm state of mind. And so then playing with other dogs typically goes significantly better than when they start out all worked up and crazy. Um, cool. I hope that makes sense. Um, and so let's see, they did awesome with that. They did really good. Uh, learning to interact with my dogs. They started out scared of Molly and Abby. Now they're not scared of them at all, and they love to interact with them. Um, they were pulling a lot on the leash. Now they're not pulling. They were jumping incessantly. Now they're not jumping. Um, they didn't know place. They don't need to know place, in all honesty. Probably in their home, they won't need to keep up that behavior unless the owners really want it. But from a management standpoint, um, they're fine. Now, these guys could, had never been separate before. So I worked sometimes on tethering them. And I'll show you right now that um, I worked these guys a lot separate over the weekend. So I'm just going to go take her. I'm going to just tie her to the banister back there. I'll just loop it over the banister. And I'll demonstrate. If I had done this four days ago, she would have um, whined and jumped at the end of the leash and pulled sort of incessantly because she's not next to Sam. So watch this. I'm backwards. The, uh, that was Sam. Sam has the pink leash on today. I switched them. So now Sam's over here. Um, and when I tether him, he's going to, he's not, there, he, the place is there. The bed is there. If he wants to climb on it and lie down, he can. He doesn't have to. Um, there's some stuff on the stairs right over there, so he's sort of sniffing it. Um, but what's cool is that just this type of separation a few days ago would have caused him to be anxious and worried and upset about us being over here. And now he's just a little bit more curiously engaged over there, totally calm um, with regards to being apart from Sadie. Um, and, by the way, Sadie also calm being apart from Sam. For two dogs that live together like that, that's pretty important um, that they be able to, you have to work them separate more often. I know, it's, it's nice to work them separate and it's a little harder. So a lot of times, Joy, what you do in your sessions with Abby and Tiger is just working them together and pulling one off but having the other stay. That's just as helpful in, in that kind of stuff too. But these two, up until now, um, had never really done anything at all separate. And the first time I tried to do this, um, there was a heightened state of anxiety just from being um, separated by just this little bit of distance. Um, and so now if I wanted, I could keep one in the crate and pull the other out and work. I could take one out. I took one to a group class last week um, and left the other one home. That was the first time they were separated for that long. They were great. Um, I took who did I take? I took Sam and Sadie was home and she just slept in her crate the whole time because I have a camera that I can look into the room when I'm not home. And uh, so I checked on her ongoingly the whole time I was gone and she was fine. She's totally calm and, and slept the whole time. So these guys have been, um, I'm super impressed there that Sam can just settle right into that mindset. And so can Sadie here settle right into this mindset, just being calm when they're not right smack next to each other. Now, left to their own devices, when there's no command or I'm not telling them where to go or what to do, most of the time they'll both cuddle up together in their bed um, and sleep or rest if the kids are watching TV or whatever else is going on. Perfect, right? I'm happy to have them do that, mostly because if they were separate, they're fine. Um, I don't love them to sit and cuddle together if, when they're separate, they would be anxious or worried or upset. Um, as long as they can be okay like this far apart, then I'm happy for them to spend more time together. Hope that makes sense, right? And so um, their sessions have been primarily working them 
Um, one in the house, one away. Yeah, both in the house is tough on them. Both in the house and right and separate is tough on them. Yeah, because they're just it's just what they're used to, um, what they're used to to their lifestyle. But I understand. Um, I worked really hard with my two to make sure both of them are super calm and comfortable, um, either together or separate. Right? It takes a lot of work. When you have two dogs, it takes a lot of work because it's literally like for me, I have felt this weekend um, and at the end of last week, I felt like it's almost as if I have three dogs. It's the amount of time equivalent to three dogs because I do a session with one dog um, and then I switch into a session with the other dog and then I do a session with the two dogs. So they both need to learn the skill set individually and then of course they both need to be able to do the skill set when they're together. Um, so it does, it takes a huge amount of investment if you're going to really put the time and effort into training a multiple dog household uh, correctly so that, and there's been times, I'll be honest with you, where I can see if I'm working them together that I don't think that Sam knows his release word very well. When I say okay to tell him he can get off, I think he follows Sadie. I think Sadie knows the release word and I say okay and Sadie comes flying off and over to me and Sam just comes along for the ride and I can tell by watching his behavior that it's more like his eyes and his body contact, his body language is more keying off of Sadie than me. And so I know, oh, are you tangled? You got it. I'm tangled. Can you get it or do you need help? Let's see. There's a little bit of troubleshooting. So as long as he's calm, there we go, you got it. He's like, oh, that was so hard. So I wanted to speak to him to let him know, like, I see you, I see what's happening. I'm happy to help him if he needs my help. I would much prefer he troubleshoot it like he just did. Um, so I would be happy to get up and go over if he were to need that support from me. Um, I think most people have a tendency to rush over and do it for him when he could pretty easily learn how to do it um, on his own to get untangled. Good boy, what a good boy. So that's a good example when he just got tangled there is it a match of my philosophy with regards to I want to help the dogs by all means, but only if they need it, right? And, and that applies to training. No matter what I'm training, I'll help them as little as they need me to help them uh, so that they can get it right on their own with their own initiative um, and their own little brain trying to figure stuff out. Um, and by talking to him there, I just let him know, hey, look, I see you. You're not alone. I'll support you. I'll help you. I didn't think he needed my help, and he didn't, which was nice. Cool, excellent. You guys have any other questions about the puppies or what they went through, what they did? Um, we started really slow. We built things up over the weekend until it got harder and harder and harder. They had lots of time spent with kids this weekend, which is awesome because they have two kids at home in their family. Um, I had kids on the floor with them, standing up, giving them treats, working them. My daughter helps a lot with the training. We did a lot of the recall games where we kind of go back and forth teaching a recall um, all the way through to the point where today they were off leash in the yard out playing together, chasing and running with Molly and Abby, and I was able to call Sadie and Sam and have them stop playing with Molly and Abby and come over to me. Um, there is also a video on my Facebook page of when all the kids were outside on the trampoline and the dogs were out in the yard, just what regular life is like as far as um, there's lots of distractions and everybody's making good choices, which is super important. Awesome. Thank you. Who's green, by the way? Who's giving me a thousand hearts? I'm curious to see um, whoever comments and their name is green. Oh, I got some pink ones too. You guys are awesome. Um, oh, Angie, you are so sweet. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Um, the puppies have been fantastic. We're having such a good time with them. And for me, um, the coolest part really is just knowing that they're not jumping, which means now they're not going to scare kids. They're not going to knock anybody over. They're not dragging anybody down the street. Um, they're coming when they're called. So the family does not have a fenced-in property, and that was something that was really important to them, that they be able to let them out. Um, you told me. I know, Angie. I appreciate it. I do. It's awesome. And I, it's awesome. And it's beautiful to see. So I love it. Um, so I think that, you know, I just wanted to sort of touch base, touch in, check in with you guys. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. If you have some more, I'd have to. You, my thoughts on correcting corrections for young dogs. What an awesome question, Catherine. Um, prong on these guys had corrections. Um, 
I never used the prong as a correction with regards to like, I never said no and then kind of like jerked on the leash or popped it. Never, nor did I need to. I only use, I used the prong collar when I was walking them around the neighborhood only because they were pulling so hard on their flat buckle collars that it's like I get concerned they'll hurt themselves. So I used the prong collar only um, teeny, literally, literally I think they, they barely, barely felt any pressure from it and that stopped their pulling instantly. I never used it as a like, hey, don't do that. So if they were gonna jump on someone, you know, if it's an older dog and they're jumping on someone, they have a prong collar on, by all means, like no and correct with the prong collar. I never did that. I used a squirt bottle. I used a squirt bottle with these guys. Um, it was super effective. It was, it's fascinating because, um, you know, we could talk, we could talk all night about the different types of corrections you can use on a dog, but I am a huge fan of using a squirt bottle. It was very effective with these guys. One of my trainers came over, Kaylin was there both at the beginning of the week and she came over again today and she said she could see a really big change in Sadie's reaction to the squirt bottle and today it looked like I said no and squirted her and it didn't really look like Sadie cared. Whereas last week I said no and squirted her and Sadie was like, she thought the world was ending because some water droplets just came towards her. Right? She was a little bit dramatic at the beginning of the week, and today she really wasn't. Today she was more like, oh, like I got squirt. And it's fascinating to me to watch that, first of all, but the important part for me is that it doesn't matter what the dog's reaction is when they get squirt, okay? Um, if you want to run, she's great. But with a regular collar, you're going to tell me she's not great with a regular collar, she misbehaves. Yeah, so for me, I like to, these guys don't misbehave for me now on a regular collar, but that's because I do a lot of energy work and, and connection. Uh, I, re, I highly reinforce them for being connected with me when they're on the prong collar, but I expect that same connection when they're not on the prong collar. Um, so it's really kind of all about pretty advanced techniques for leash management, whether or not you can get them to segue over from one to the other, but for it's literally like, what's your definition? My definition's the same regardless of what tool I'm using, and so it's just harder to get compliance to the rules on a flat buckle collar if they've never had a training tool layered in. Uh, once they get the training tool layered in, I should be able to go back and forth, as long as there's not huge distractions, but for me, literally, like taking them out to go to the bathroom, they would have dragged me um, down the hill, but now they're, they're checking in with me. Um, so, but segueing back to the squirt bottle, the reaction, it doesn't matter how a dog reacts. What matters is if you see a reduction in the amount of times the dog is doing the inappropriate behavior. If they're less likely to do the behavior again in the future, then it works. Um, if they're freaking out and they get all panicky or dramatic when you squirt them, but they're just as likely to jump, it's not working. Or if you squirt them for jumping and they act really stoic and they act like, well, I don't even care that you just did that, but they don't ever jump again. Like you can really see either end of that spectrum work against you and sort of what you, th you think, if the dog is really dramatic that they wouldn't do it again, sometimes they do. And if a dog is stoic, you'd think they don't care and that they will keep doing it and sometimes they don't. So it's just a matter of, it's it's, DNA and genetics and um, natural selection. I mean, if you think about wild dogs, like what has been, if you were hundreds of thousands of years ago, if you were in a wild dog pack and you're hunting a bison and you got stepped on and you had this big dramatic panic attack and you dropped to the ground and you're whining and complaining about the fact that you just got hurt, um, the, the rest of your pack and the bison's gonna keep running and you'll be left with no food. So dogs have literally been conditioned over hundreds of years to oftentimes be quite stoic. Um, and so just because you don't see a big reaction when you say no and squirt them, if you use the system consistently um, and correctly, it will work, uh, which is, you know, so it's just hard for us because we want or expect to see a big dramatic reaction. And if we don't see a big dramatic reaction, sometimes we think there's no way it can work. Um, but even today with almost no reaction whatsoever, um, you know, Sadie really is not doing anything wrong. Um, and so it's working.
right? She, there's a less of a probability that she would do it wrong again in the future. That means it's working. So I can't tell you in the heat of the moment based on their reaction if that, I know, <laughs> I know, look at her. Um, she's like totally gonna start snoring, right? They're so good, they're so great. And not to mention they're super soft and you could just cuddle with them. Um, Sam will practically do a somersault to like get into your lap if you get on the floor with him. Like they are, everybody was like, I, wanted, I want this dog, I'm gonna take him home with me. Like you can't have them, their owners will kill me. Um, just water in the squirt bottle. Yeah, I don't put anything else in the squirt bottle. Um, I, I don't care if it's on a mist or a stream, that just matters how far away the dog is from you. Um, I don't like the teeny little travel, like just a teeny puff of a mist. If the dog is farther from you, that they would never know that that happened. I don't walk towards the dog generally. I don't chase them down. I stand my ground and if they're moving a little bit away from me, I just squirt in their direction. And even if the water droplets don't reach them, it doesn't matter because most of my attention is focused on the positive. Most of my communication is gonna be clicking and treating when they get it right. And so let's say they don't mind the squirt bottle at all. Let's say it's not actually an aversive. And let's say that they are pretty much like, whatever, I don't really care. When I'm training something like don't jump, it's usually pa it's pass or fail. You're either gonna get a treat or you're gonna get me saying no and squirting. So even if you don't like the squirt very much or if you don't care about it at all, it's not a treat. So if it's not a treat, then, um, it's, it's literally like just the fact that it's not a treat makes it sort of like, well, that's not good. It could have been a lot better. So they just try, they're really invested in trying to figure out how can I get, if, if those are my only two options, right? Something I love or something that I don't care about, they're gonna want what they love. So if you use that system correctly, if I have somebody that uses a squirt bottle consistently and they tell me it's not working, then I know really without getting any more information from them that what's missing is that there isn't enough of the treats. There isn't enough of the positive reinforcement for the good choices to counterbalance. I mean, it literally, I would want it to see it be a ratio of like 10 to one, right? 10 times I'm setting them up that they're getting clicks and treats, maybe once they get it wrong. And that one time that they get that communication from me saying, no, that wasn't right, they're like, oh, I was hoping I'd get another treat. Um, and these guys, I just use their food. Like, I wasn't even using treats. I was using kibble, but in their world, it was super fun. They had a blast. They'd love it. They wanted it. They had to learn how to take the food from me appropriately and not push each other to try to get, you know, Sam was the worst at it as far as every time I'd try to feed Sadie, Sam would be putting his head like, hi, handsome. He was like, I heard my name. Um, Sam would be putting his head like right on top of me to try to feed Sadie. So I did a lot of um, very clear delivery of my food to one or the other and lots of reinforcing Sam when he didn't try to come and get the food from Sadie. So um, whatever system you end up using, you just need to make sure that you're clear in telling them. Um, and if you're using positive reinforcement correctly, then, um, then they'll get the message super fast. Um, what did I do to stop them from nipping food? Something's out there, probably a deer based on what I can hear. Um, I do the exercise a lot of times if they're gonna be nipping at me or trying to get the food or take it aggressively or be pushy. Molly, yeah, Molly and Abby both. I'm gonna go knock on my window. That's their cue to stop that barking. And then if they don't, I'll call them and they'll have to come inside. But that they there is something that would have been that was animal related. So that bark, something animal related um, outside in our in the woods. But they're good. So they know. I knock on the window, it means stop barking. Um, these two are just they're rescue dogs and they're siblings and they're lab mixes. I think they have pointer in them. They are lovely. They're awesome. Um, thank you for saying so. And, um, but listen, like, I don't know if you guys, you guys could hear mine barking outside, right, Molly? Now I knocked on the door and they're not barking now. They look so quiet. Awesome. Yeah. You should watch the Periscope from Friday morning <laughs> or Thursday. I don't remember what day it was, but you couldn't hear them. Okay. You could hear. Them. Okay. Perfect. So 
they were barking outside. I knocked on the window. That means, my definition of knocking on the window means stop barking or you're going to have to come inside. Right? So I wouldn't be able to have that definition if I didn't have control over calling them to bring them in anytime under any circumstances. Um, but they know. They're good. They know what I mean by that. They know I've used it enough times at this point that they recognize what it means. They understand the rules. And so they're complying. Um, unless they were to see something else or something different would show up. Um, cool. So I don't know. I could show you. Want me to show you with the food in my hand what I did? I will. Let me grab up some food and a clicker. Come on. Um, so you asked about, yes, please. Cool. You asked about, like, what did I do to get him to not be so nippy with the food? And uh, let's see, who is this? Sadie. Sam was um, probably a little, good girl. She was not so pushy, but it literally is just, they're doing a good job. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. So you need to see her. Let me back up just a little bit and I'll turn the camera down. so you can see her better. And so I would have my hand like this at the very beginning um, last week and she would be like practically jumping on me. Um, yeah, now she's like, you want me to lie down? Come here, they can't see you if you lie down. Good girl. So I do a little bit with, um, how about if I just hold my hand here and then when you stop trying to get it, I will click and give it to you. So she's gonna get it for not trying to get it. Right? You can take that one step further, drop the piece, and open your hand, but without clicking, so you can't get it until I give it to you. Good. So when I, she doesn't come to lunge toward my hand just because she sees the food, then I can click and give it to her. Yeah, she worked a lot on lying down. Good girl. This way. Good, they can't see you. I'm just gonna click right away and give it to her because I like that she followed me. I haven't worked that much with her, but it would be helpful for her to learn it, so I just clicked. Do you see that moment? You can almost feel it, right? The moment that she doesn't try to come forward to the food is when she gets it, is when I click to tell her if she can have it. And she's just like, I think I should lie down. And she doesn't need to lie down, but she doesn't know that. I've worked a lot on down. Yeah. So, and I can do the same behavior with her lying down. Do, 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 do. I just have to move my chair. Good. So I wouldn't expect her to come and try to take the food right out of my um, pouch. But here, let me put it in a little bowl. Hang on a second. Oh, good girl. Okay, so I have not worked this with her before right now. I have not trained this or worked it with her this week. Um, so I'll just show you how. So there's food, open, container. Okay. But I do all my training like this because it's way easier for me to have the food out and it's just impulse control. It's like one more thing in their life that they need to demonstrate some sort of self-control, and that it, the resource comes from me. Good, and that she can have it after I click, and then I give it to her. Uh-uh. So uh, Sam's starting to whine a little bit more over there. If, he, if that escalates at all, I'll say no and squirt him because he shouldn't be uh, making a big ruckus back there. Does this make sense? This is how I train dogs to not be so pushy with the food and how they can be calm. And, so, and my kids do the same thing. So my kids will hold food like this and work with a dog to teach the dogs to not be pushy with kids either. Um, it's a super important skill to go home with 
so that, you know, you get the little toddler walking out of the kitchen holding a cookie and the dog just walks right up and takes it. Like, no way. Um, was the other dog tied? Right now, yeah, I tethered the other dog over by the stairs earlier in the broadcast just because we were talking about how these two um, used to show a lot of anxiety when they were apart from one another. Um, so that's what he was demonstrating, that he's not worried about being away from, from Sadie anymore. So he's calmer now. Just I did the uh-uh to tell him, like, stop with the whining, and he stopped. If he hadn't stopped, I would have said no and squirted him. Oh, he just did it again. So I have to make a, a call on that one. He's lying down and looks pretty calm and just made a little bit of noise. Good. So I'll have to figure out. If it gets worse, I would definitely correct it. Okay, Kara. Cool. So these are both ways that help her learn how to be calm around the food. Cool. You guys have any questions about that? She could do this all night. She thinks it's pretty easy. Just heard Abby again. Okay. Now I'm gonna call Abby. Hang on, let me get Abby. Oh, thank you so much. Very impressive. You'll try the clicker. Yeah, the clicker's so fun, so easy. Let me um see if Abby will come real quick. Abby girl. Good girl. So, um, yeah, my neighbor's dogs are out barking, so I don't know. Something's going on. Something's going on. Hey, so now we have Abby in the mix, so the variables will be a little bit different. Um, I wanted you to see Sam, but then you can't see these guys. So cute. Thank you. Yeah, so we don't need the leash. Abby's here. Good. They're so cute, I know. They really are. Hi, sweetheart. So Sadie shouldn't try to take the food when I hand it to Abby. Good, Sadie. That's what Sadie and Sam both were doing. When I would go to bring it to one dog, the other dog would be like, two, I'd have two noses side by side. Good, so I'm going to show you guys Sam because I'm going to squirt him if he whines again. <laughs> so you guys can watch that or see that. Good, Sadie. Good, Abby. Abby, up. Oh, they still can't see you. I thought if she popped up, they, you could see her. I think Sam heard me say I'd scored him if he whined again. <laughs> cool. Good baby. What a good girl. You're so good. She's like, I want to play with Abby. Good. Awesome. What a good girl. Cool. They're good. He's good. And, yeah, um, not on Periscope, I would be, I actually will right now, reinforcing Sam. Right, because it's just as important when I'm when I'm not working, Sam, to be at this stage to be reinforcing him for being good, making good choices. Hi, sweetheart. Um, right, I'm gonna let him go too. Good boy. And they'll probably start playing again. Oh, hang on. So much periscopes, awesome. Thank you. You gotta go. Oh, no problem. Yeah, I'm gonna go too. We're winding down. Letting these guys off leash, my guess is that they'll probably start to play again because they always play. They love to play. You guys were awesome. I'm so glad that everybody got to pop in, get to see how everybody's doing. These two, they're, they're awesome. They're so fun to work. We're having so much fun. They're learning a lot. Um, and again, the best part is they're not jumping anymore. So um, anyway, you guys have an awesome, awesome night. I know my kids worked hard this weekend. They did a great job helping out. So um, you guys have a great night and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. I appreciate your compliment. Have a great night. Take care.